And drag racing at the end of the day is point A to point B, right? But I know, I know Mafia's potential and I would have to say... Unlike last year, this time the car came back more powerful. I think I came back with about 200 more horses. Ah. So whether he goes, I'll still be able gentlemen it was one of the most talked about racing events coming into the year 2024 that was the king of drag and today i have my guests here from what i would say was one of the ultimate teams uh, that were there that's race wolf uh, right here we've got uh, habib we've got priyesh we've got mr zubair and there's also two other people who are apparently camera shy <laughs> One of them is the driver of the Mafia, one of the top dogs who was uh, also, you know, making the waves of the news, uh, that's Ibrahim. And of course, we've got Hussein, who is also part of the Race Wolf team. Gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great to have you guys here. I think that uh, the best thing that we can do right now is get, you know, an introduction, proper introduction. Uh, because even for people like me, the first time that I saw Race Wolf was the first time the R8 was, was posted. So I would also like to know, you know, what are you guys about? And yeah, just what's what's the Race Wolf brand? No problem. Thank you very much for having us here. Uh, well. So to start off with, I'd like to say that Race Wolf was brought together very, very quickly in a short period of time. Mm -hmm. But we've known each other for a very long time. So it was something that was supposed to happen in the process. But we formalized this very, very quickly. And that's why people didn't know about it. People didn't hear about it. Yeah. But we tried to be as prepared as we could. Mm -hmm. But just to give a bit of background information, I am the co-founder and chairman of Race Wolf. And then... I'm the bike commissioner for Race Wolf. Okay. I'm the one who's in charge of uh, membership and scrutiny. Ah, uh, awesome. And then we've got our off-camera members here as well. One mm -hmm. is the president and one is the vice as well. Who is the president? Hussein or Ibrahim? Hussein's the president and okay. vice is Ibrahim. So, is Mafia and us, one team. Mm -hmm. Just to get that clarification out there. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so, just to give you an idea. So, the idea when we sat down here was we wanted to create a team mm -hmm. of people who were extremely passionate about drag racing. Mm -hmm. I think each one of us had an interest in it and we wanted to, we wanted to formalize a team that had a similar mindset, yeah. had a passion towards actually spending behind the cars and hopefully making this team not only a team within Zambia, but something that we pursue outside of Zambia. Mm -hmm. And that so was the goal of why we to an international Exactly. Level. We need that representation. You know, we've got other categories in Zambia. Yeah. We all respect all of them, of course. And it's time that drag also came up and got recognized, but also allowed Zambia to become recognized. Okay. And that was our goal. Habib, you said you are the bike uh, commissioner. Do you race bikes? That's correct. Actually, we have been riding bikes for a very long time mm -hmm. and uh, we've uh, basically seen the biking community grow as well. Yeah. Uh, and uh, fortunate enough, uh, <coughs> we've got uh, Lusaka bikers who are the previous uh, three drag race uh, organizers yes, and yes. currently are the only officially registered club with ZAMSA affiliation and a fully legal club as well. Mm -hmm. And they came up with the idea of the drags and uh, the introduction of the vehicles and the car and the bikes as well, mm -hmm. was something that uh, brought all the community together, the motorsport community. And uh, over and above that, we as Race Wolf do understand that uh, on the international scene as well, we have got a combination of bikes and cars. Mm -hmm. And that's where we came in and we had to basically bring in uh, the biking community part of this. Osaka bikers, on the other hand, have done an amazing job. As we have seen, the first year, people didn't believe in the drags, yeah, but we had absolutely. a good turnout. Yeah. Last year, we had close to 3,000 people. This year, we are still counting yeah. that's how many people mm -hmm. we had there. So mm -hmm. the event is growing on a very large scale. So at the end of the day, uh, with Lusaka bikers hosting such a success, successful event, we felt that we need to create this racing team, which mm -hmm. has got affiliation with the international market as well, which is Race Wolf. Mm -hmm. and uh, we try and incorporate and see where we can put ourselves on the map. Ah, okay, so Race Wolf will include bikes and cars. Absolutely, the same, yes. the absolutely, the absolutely. Team. We're open for everything. It's, okay, yeah. all right. And Zubair, as our, our master of membership, <laughs> yes. and what, does it, what does it take to be, to be a part of the, uh, the Race Wolf team? I think, is this the only uh, official team we have right now? This is no, you, there this some, some guys. There's other members. There, there are other members there that are, are members. part of this. Um, mm -hmm. A famous uh, individual, also the track hawk, Mr. M, okay, is also part, part of the Race Wolf team. team. Okay. okay. And uh, we are in the process of the formal registration. Mm -hmm. So we're almost there. 
where we'll be officially registered, have all our documentations in mm -hmm. place, and then we'll be taking it from there. Okay. And that's when he comes into play. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. So, like Piyash has mentioned, once we are fully registered, is when we'll sit down and oh, discuss okay. on how to bring on uh, new players into yes. the team. Okay, yeah, because I thought yeah. it would be you know good to just understand what it takes to uh, be a part of the you know the race wolf team. So to add to that, we'll right? So it, one of our key models is exclusivity, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we're trying to create this sport. Okay. If everybody jumps onto it, the sport won't be there, right? So. We, we're all about competition because competition creates, it'll drive the sport to be more, yeah. right? So the idea is we can't have, we would love to have everybody on board, of mm -hmm. course. You know, that'll be the idealistic <laughs> yeah. way of doing things. Yeah. But we're going to try to keep it exclusive so we have competition within ourselves, which means there'll be more promotion of the sport. Fans will have something to choose from as well, right? And also allow people to become more specific with the way they handle their cars the tuners that come in, the modifications that can be done within Zambia, okay. and how we're getting the full involvement of players on board. Okay. That's the sort of vision we see. But the moment we step out of Zambia for any competition, we're one. Everybody's one. Everybody's yes. one, and that's the way we're always going to keep it, and that's the way we'll treat it. Okay, so when you, when, uh, when you speak about exclusivity, is it on specific cars will be allowed, uh, specific drivers, or... What, what exactly do you mean by you know having exclusivity? So there's no bias to an individual, mm -hmm. but there will be bias to the way we see the cars, the, see the potential. We, you know, there there are times that people will buy a car mm -hmm. and they'll have it momentarily and it's moved off. They've oh, lost okay. race. Moved. We're looking at people who are seeing the long term vision. Long term vision. vision they're okay. in it. They're wear, they're ready to invest. It's mm -hmm. gonna take time, but we're gonna get there together. And that we, we're looking for a, a very team player. Yeah, that's okay. what we want. All so right. we have a few people in mind that are out there, we, we, which we, we're not going to disclose, yeah, of course, okay. yet. Right? <laughs> but it won't just be open but, to anyone. Yeah, but it's just a, no, but, but, but yeah. no hard feelings. Yeah. It's not that we have any hatred or anything of that sort. Mm -hmm. It's just in order to create and fulfill the vision we have. Because mm -hmm. there's there's a goal, and our goal is to be outside of Zambia. We want to yeah. represent Zambia at mm -hmm. the end of the day. Yeah, and I think to achieve that, definitely you need to have a certain standard. So like you're saying, you need people who think long term, you know, Correct. not just the short term. And I, I just want to add this. It, it doesn't have to be that everybody has to buy a Lamborghini. Don't yeah. get it. <laughs> That's not the idea, mm, right? Yeah. There's different categories in drag racing. There's different areas that we have to venture into. So there's availability in a lot of positions. Yeah. So, so if I turbo my Honda Prelude, then it's up to... Honda Prelude. The challenge. That's a very good car. Yes, it can work. All right. Actually, we need to <laughs> uh, the table. Uh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. We need you to take off the t-shirt and put one of these yeah. on. Yeah. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I mean, yeah. Let's talk a bit about um, the drag races. Uh, sure. This year, this was the first time, your first time um, entering. Yes. But my question was... Where have you been the past uh, two years? I think that you all know, my life. Someone, yeah, <laughs> it's, someone it's, who, not, it's not even uh, the so past two years. It's all my life. We yeah, could say. <laughs> it was a long time, man. I think in, in 2019 we did that video with the with the Supra. Yeah, you and I. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it just got me wondering when I was you know thinking about making this podcast. Like, where has he been? What made him decide that you know this year he wants to so be active? Look, if you look at the history, I've always tried to involve myself in motorsport wherever I could. If you remember, actually, I used to mm -hmm. write for Z Gear in the oh magazines. yes in the magazines in yes. the magazines I used to write for you guys in certain yeah. articles right uh -huh. um so I, I have a deep passion for it yeah. and at that point in time um if you think about it the, my first race was actually in uh, that racetrack uh, what was the name of the racetrack yeah Lawrence yeah. Allen circuit oh. past Chingola if you remember that was the was first race? yes it was an official race people yeah. tend to oh, forget oh, that yeah you're one of the first drags the bikes there we were there and I that's when I raced the super it was awful okay yeah yeah Almost off road. Yeah, that was off road. <laughs> yeah, the, the Look, track was it really wasn't the best track. Uh -huh. was Fair enough. Okay. okay, but it was nice for the whole community to come out and actually do this. Yeah. So I actually raced there. But of course, I guess at that time, the traction wasn't as much as how yeah, the last year's cool. races were. Uh -huh. And last year, I would have participated, but I sold my car then. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. okay. So this year, at least you you had your car ready and your mindset uh, was also I like wouldn't even say ready. We were hairline ready. Hairline ready. Oh, what hairline, you saw was hairline ready. Hairline ready. <laughs> we we went through a lot of things. We mm. went through a lot of things to get to that point. No, but at, at least, least we made it. At least we know that there's yeah. there's a lot more to to look, to look okay. forward to. Yeah, since look, that was that was hairline ready. Yeah, if you think about it, us. I mean, with uh, with the team cars being the R8 Mafia, mm -hmm. even the Track Hog. Yeah. We were there tinkering at them till late at night. Mm -hmm. You know, we there were points in time where we'd be like, hey, listen, yeah, we're afraid this is gonna happen. This is gonna happen. Maybe we need to pull out. 
mm. till the last moment. Mm. Yeah. So okay. no, it was, was good that the whole team energy was there, and somehow we all managed. Yeah, to get and everybody it. managed to get their cars through without uh, many issues. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, let's let's talk about the the R8. I okay. think that it has literally broken the internet at at this point. <laughs> uh, and you know what I wanted to just find out from you was uh, why the R8 uh, platform? Why was this the car that you you know thought you could? You know, enter into the drag races, modify it the way that you've done. Right. You know, why was there any other cars that you looked into getting for you know high performance or? No, it's, it's a good question. It's yeah. a good question. Everybody has personal taste. So yeah. I've had history with the Supra. I've had history with the GTR, and I just wanted a different platform. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so as a team, we decided what's going to be the best platform for us to see how we're going to go in the future and mm -hmm. move forward. We needed something that brought in modern technology as well. Yeah. but had the backup support available which was one of uh, which was a very key uh, factor for us when we were choosing this because mm -hmm. if, if you look on the media and everywhere it's all over the net where the v10s are being heavily modified yeah. being the lamborghini or the audi in the states in the uk and it gave us a, a solid platform where we need we had backup support we mm -hmm. had parts availability we had a team available that would come down and assist all of us when we needed it so mm -hmm. It set us up for the future in a price point that was affordable. Because I mean, we can't go buy a Lamborghini Huracan and start yeah, to turbo in that thing. That's worth about four hundred, yeah. five hundred thousand dollars. You know, yeah. it's very expensive. While the opportunity came to us, where the vehicle was with us, yeah, broad, and it was at a very, very good price because there were issues with it. Mm -hmm. But we sorted them out, and that's the idea. And you you always want to different. start with a project car, you know? Yeah, okay. And that's what it is. It's all, it's all project cars. <laughs> it's interesting to call an R8 uh, project car. <laughs> no, of course. Yeah. Everything's a project car. But yeah. you, the more you see on YouTube, the more you'll experience. You'll see that these guys go nuts on these cars. You yeah, know? Eh? Stripped down to the bone. If, uh, if I had to show you a video, you'd see that the R8 was basically stripped down before I came to the races the day before. Serious? Okay. Hey, okay, yes. cool. Uh, another car that I think I wanted to, you know, sort of touch on that's part of the team is our vice president's uh, E63. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you'll be willing to raise his voice and let us know, sir, why, why did you pick the, the E63, uh, E63S as a platform to, to race? Normally when people go out and buy my, my E63 is, you know, just to be a luxury car to show up and shine. So was there any other options oh, that you, you had thought about? Uh, or... Or, you know, it has always been the easy Brian, come and show us your face. <laughs> <laughs> my my, options, you were, my yeah. options were M5, RS6, RS7, mm -hmm. E63. The reason I chose the Mercedes is because uh, the stock engine and stock gearbox can take 1,200 horsepower. And, and Whereas right. the M5, yeah. above 800, you have to rebuild the engine. I'm not ready to rebuild an engine. That's why I went with Mercedes. Ah, okay, cool. So, Looks like I've reached the limit now. Uh, okay, so now if you try to push further, you actually have to rebuild, have to rebuild stuff. Engine, which I'm not ready for. Uh, yeah. okay, okay. But as a team, we'll convince him. That's what we're gonna mm, do. To do it rebuild. Rebuild. As a team, we need okay. that. Do, do you? Are you willing to push forward with it, or you're thinking of stepping into another? We're still debating as a team. <laughs> okay, try and see what you. We'll, we'll figure out because. Ahead. Yeah, exactly. It's a journey, like you're saying. And for us, I we've think the idea is. Around here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, couple of like, we've with got the gearbox, I can see uh, I think uh, with us, the idea is that it can't be a one car team. Mm -hmm. We have to have multiple cars running similar times because it's racing. Anything happens. Things, you know, you start to hear noises, you start to s you feel things and you think it's not right. And you need mm -hmm. a backup option if we're going international, right? Yes. And whether I'm the backup, he's the backup, Habib's the backup, we're all backups for each other. Mm -hmm. We're backing each other up in yeah. preparation for anything. Okay. I think that, I think that changes an outlook for a lot of people because... A lot of us getting into this were thinking R8 versus Mafia. Hmm. These guys are going head to head. It's, it's beef. Nobody's, you know, talking <laughs> nice to each other. But <laughs> now we're realizing that it's actually um, a team and you guys are, you know, yeah. there to, to, to actually help each other out. Yes. But still, mm -hmm. I think I would, I would still pose a question. Which one is the faster car? The race will come and faster. The race will <laughs> Perfect answer. Uh, Perfect mm. I think if you're looking at potential for both, they both have equal potential. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to remember that there's so many variables that come into that day. Yeah. There's one day that I or Zubair Habib can be the fastest, mm -hmm. can set the fastest time. Yeah. The next day it's something else. Because the, 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 these cars are so finical. They have such minute differences mm -hmm. and changes that change the whole way the car behaves yeah. and at, the, at that day it's not your day it happens uh, and drag racing at the end of the day is point a to point b yeah not head to head 
Remember, mm-hmm. where the races that we're doing are not head-to-head races. They're yeah. point A to point B. And so whoever sets the fastest time for that day holds it. Yeah. Right? But I know I know Mafia's potential. And I would have to say equals, if not possibly, he has the potential to beat to take it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's Team R8. Okay. And Team Mafia and Team Race Off. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, mean, I, was coming, I was coming out as Team Mafia because I'm always for the idea that you, you, you need to see a car race. You 100%. get what I mean? Right. So when the pictures no, came no, out... No, 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 no. Yeah, I mean, no, he's, no, he's, he's proven himself for the time past two years. Time to time. Time to time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he has, like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, that line up. No. Yeah. yeah, he's proven himself. So I think for me, it was I needed to see the R8 uh, perform. And sure. Obviously, once once we did, it's, it, it, it's definitely um, a quick machine. But like you are saying, the level at which you guys are playing, it's, it really comes down to you know things like reaction time, and you know it could be this day the car's performing well, the next day temperatures, tire temperatures, air temperatures, sensors, yeah. everything that's happening, mist shifts. Mm, shifting too early stuff. yeah bad all of those right, bad launches mm. the temperature Jumping. changes the whole day we have a variating temperature yeah, during the, the day morning, much that affects cooler. how the car reads data mm. all of that factors come in. yeah okay cool so let's talk a bit about your your test run in the morning there's a clip that has been going around um you know where you the car kind of <laughs> you know made a little 100%. uh turn there and I, I was just thinking about you know the way that happened and how do you sort of prepare for that sort of thing as a as, as a driver is it you know down to your reaction time how do you balance um, you know being able to be fast and also just keeping safe at the sure. same time yeah. so one of the things as a team that we're training ourselves to prepare on is reading the car's data mm-hmm. so that was the first run that was a practice run also yeah. you gotta remember that wasn't the time run that was a practice run mm-hmm. now we're there since seven o'clock in the morning tires are cold all the temperatures are cold, yeah. surface is cold, mm-hmm. and heat is a very important factor when it comes to traction. And drag racing is all about traction. You can have a thousand horsepower <laughs> and have zero traction, you're not yeah. getting anywhere. Right? You can have less horsepower, good traction, you'll beat the thousand horsepower cars any day. So at that point in time, it was our first run, the tires were extremely cold, cold yeah. extremely mm-hmm. cold. And when the power hits on with any car, when it's going to hit on at that point in time, with the surface also being cold, there's no grip. Yeah, yeah. And most cars have their power come through third gear and on. Mm-hmm. So if you'll see us, it's one, two, and third is when it pulled out. That's really, yeah. But that's where driver skill comes into play to be able to catch that. Mm-hmm. All right, and understanding that you have to catch it at the right time because, and let off the throttle at the right time. Otherwise, if it hooks, it's yeah. going okay. in whichever direction it's going in. <laughs> so All right. that's why if you saw, I pulled off, let off, mm-hmm. but yeah. then I still- Still put it straight put the and, then and let it go. Yeah, okay. So what's, what's, the, what, what's the kind of practice that goes into that? Is just you being aware of the, the car's behavior? So, yeah, being aware, this, this was a learning lesson for us, first mm-hmm. time performing with the car as well. So it's understanding that we need to do the next steps, which is heating up the tires, mm-hmm. okay? Possibly preparing the surface, Yeah. should that come down in the line. This, this now becomes the whole team involvement of how you see it on the States and everywhere yes. else where they've got guys on the track, they're sweeping, they're heating up things, mm-hmm. they're doing all the, all of those practices now come into play and we start to see a different type of motorsport, not yeah. just line to line racing. Ah, okay. So, I mean, definitely the venue also contributes to, you know, how yes. the cars uh, perform. Do, do you feel like left lane was better than right lane or right lane was better than left? Or was I, 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 you know, for the first time on there, there was a lot of people discussing it between the team. We also had between us which lane and most people preferred the right lane. I think mm. uh, Ibrahim agrees with that. Yeah. Um, it, it had more traction, but it had more oh, minute bumps. Yeah. So the the faster you got towards the end, you were really doing that, while the left lane was a smoother lane, but less traction. Mm-hmm. Okay. But if you look at our times, I think, Junior, we had a, a variation of half a second maybe that each lane would do. But sometimes, like I, I personally, when we pulled it up, we got a faster time on the left lane than mm-hmm. the right lane. Okay. So like I said, there's so many variables. Yeah, okay. So like for the track that you performed at uh, with the Supra. Yes. Is it more feasible to convince people to recondition that one or should we just look into, you know, I don't know if it's lobbying government or what to get like a fresh fresh track going? That's actually a very decent track for the amount of years that it's been sitting there. Mm -hmm. Besides the tree stops that are coming Was it designed to be a drag race? So uh, it's got a stretch. Mm -hmm. It's got a stretch with a runoff that also connects to a track. So you can actually have a full track. You can do a full circuit and an off-road circuit. So it, it blended mm. all three sports together, which was, it's brilliant. The yeah. only disadvantage it had was location, and there was nobody there to take care of it now, yeah. which is a very sad thing, but 
Mm. What can we do? Actually, wish I was there to see it functional, man. Yeah. Because I've read quite a, a number of stories anyway come out of um, you know that. You probably was still in school. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> I probably wasn't born. I was a youngster, <laughs> a youngster somewhere in, in school. Yeah. But you know what's more interesting that I find mm. uh, back in the day, if you look at uh, uh, some of the photos that there, they used to shut down town. So Mufila, Chingola, they used mm. to shut down town and race in town. Sort of yeah, like Monaco F, uh, the Grand Prix. For the rallies? No, not just rallies. Street, uh, guys that had amateur cars and mm. car races, they used like to do that. Cross, but like a rally cross, yeah. right? Yeah. But they used to actually close downtown and okay. do it inside town. I wish we could do that now. Oh, Imagine yeah. that, seeing all the businesses there. They get one weekend where everybody prepares in one year. We close down certain roads and create a circuit in the roads. Yeah, okay. Find the cars in India, Zambia Bank. It's going to be a problem. <laughs> Election. Yeah, no, that's like you yeah. have the certain part of the road that does us bad tracks and what, and you end yeah. up having people, you know, crashing and stuff. Sorry. Okay, so other than racing against the mafia, because I think that's what everybody was kind of looking at, were there any other cars that you guys were looking forward to seeing, you know, performing against each other? Just you and I don't hmm? Any other cars <laughs> that you thought? Mm, which cars of the day were you thinking if this. Oh, the, the RS3. Yeah. Oh yeah, but it didn't show, show up. Eh? Show up. Yeah. That, that was yes. supposed to be the one that we look forward to, right? Mm, yeah. Okay. Is that a confirmed 900 horsepower? Because I heard somebody said it's 900 horsepower build. Everything you see, it uh, comes on the track. <laughs> exactly. Official track. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. You see, Patrick. One thing what we've been noticing now is everyone's cars are now 1,000 horsepower. Mm, mm, mm. That's a lot. Yeah. Another three coming to prove what what it can do. Yeah. It failed. Mm, mm. So 1,000 horsepower is a lot. Yeah. For writing a message, 1,000 horsepower, anyone can do it. Very easy. What's up racing? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it would, it would have been something that we would look forward to. Yeah. And yeah. all the power so to it because we're looking racing. at it. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Uh, yeah, we don't, we don't participate yeah. in WhatsApp racing, mm. right? But the RC, because the power to weight ratio on that would have been incredible. Mm. So that would have been a, a fun car to see, right? You see, our main goal for the drives to enter with the R8 mm. was basically it's a time attack. Mm -hmm. We wanted to see what's the best time each car is doing, regardless of who you paid with. Yeah. So it's each vehicle with its best timing. Mm -hmm. And that was what was what was gonna take the show. Mm -hmm. So at yeah. the end of the day we, it's not drag racing isn't really about which vehicle and who was ahead by a tire Stein. or a plot mm -hmm. in between or whatever people mm -hmm. have been saying. But at the end of the day it's more about the time attack. Yeah. Look at the numbers, they speak for themselves. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So the big question, I think, uh, that came out of the drag races is why why didn't you guys get paired and race each other, considering that <laughs> everybody thought that no, you yeah, were I the can, fastest, uh, I can you know, that. guys on the track. No, no, hundred percent. So I think I'll also clarify that. Mm -hmm. uh, why did I start off racing against, or we? Why did we start off racing against the Touareg? Yeah, it's because we expected the Audi to be there. Oh, so okay. it was a last minute change, and there was no prep. Now, how do you? reshuffle the whole setup because oh so your come. initial race was going to be you and the rs correct three okay. correct so that's where the Touareg had to come in okay okay but i mean displacement were both v10s kind of deal but mm -hmm. that's not the main factor the main factor that that was and we couldn't or the organizers mm -hmm. and you know we have to commend them for this they couldn't risk reshuffling the whole line how are you yes. going to do that at night before mm -hmm. that takes way too much prep to do oh okay yeah okay. so that ended up giving us an odd number of cars as well in the race mm -hmm. not even Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, but, but I mean, I think that the there should have been a way that we would have pit you and uh, Ibrahim against mm -hmm. each other. But I mean, understanding from from what you're saying, because obviously these lists are uh, you know are made beforehand. Correct. And also considering the fact that this is not like the final race uh, that we have this year. Obviously, mm -hmm. the championship is coming um, later on. Correct. Uh, but yeah, I think it it a lot of people got in touch with me and said it almost felt like the show was a scam oh, okay. because <laughs> <laughs> the whole month coming yeah. up to the drag races was yeah. R8 Mafia yeah. R8 Mafia so yeah. to get to a point where people didn't see that I, we had people traveling you know all the way from Dola what just yeah. to see that it was a scam. yeah you know so I, sorry, so I, I just feel that uh, people that are following the drags mm -hmm. don't understand the actual concept of the drags. How it works. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, the first run that is done, that's where the organizers set up the vehicles according to their make and they've got the criteria that they will follow, right? Mm -hmm. That's when the Audi ran against the Touareg. Yeah. Further to that, now they look at the first run timings and that will determine now who you paid with. Mm -hmm. So if we were to run the last run, definitely both cars would have been together. 
-hmm. But unfortunately, there was a slight technical fault that was developed on the Mercedes, mm -hmm. and for reasons that we don't want to risk the breaking the entire vehicle. Yeah. So we heard we heard something that wasn't right, mm -hmm. and we didn't want to take that risk. And yeah. as a team, yeah. we sat down and we did a collective decision that we'd rather pull out the cars because mm -hmm. so we need to prepare ourselves yeah. for the next races, yes. and we need to make sure that we were still on board Let's at that time. So there's no point okay. in breaking your car midway. Just to prove a point to the mm -hmm. car that okay, both cars ran together. Yeah, then yeah. You're spending tens and twenty thousand dollars just to try and get it fixed. Yeah. At the end, it's on the team, right? Mm. This was a team pressure that we had, and yeah. given the team, we were both willing, and we said, you know what, that's no, perfect. We do it. Yeah. yeah, and this one, yeah, because this one is just uh, collecting points. So even if uh, you know you pulled out at that point, I think Junior won most of his races, if 100%. not all of them. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah I think he, Junior had all of them, right? You had yeah, every one. He took every single one. Yeah, the races that he had. He was telling them for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no so i mean i just wanted people to to understand that because there were things coming out like no mafia is just scared you saw the r8 no, before no, 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 and what no, no. people should understand the technicalities no, no, no. of a drag race first mm, then they yeah. will understand that how the pairing is done and yeah. also understand that there's a lot of money being put into these cars and time correct mm. the that's not just that entertainment tells you that something is not right it's better that you why should we take the risk of that yes you know? mm. Okay. No, and the I races think... will happen again, and we'll see how it goes. Right? Yeah, they'll be able to prove. And there's yeah. not a call out, Junior. There's know. not a call out because <laughs> if there's a call out, I'm telling it right now. I hope he wins. <laughs> <laughs> From my end, but the, the team wins at the end. But if yeah. it's between me and him, and if people want to know what it is, I hope he wins. Mm. Okay, cool. That's from the bottom of my heart. So I mean, uh, the other question I had was actually for uh, for Ibrahim, which is about uh, your race uh, last year with the with the R35. And you know the first one you took it, and then the second one you you didn't take it. But then also referencing uh, this year with the orange R thirty five, I think you took the first race. Second one he pulled you, but then you managed to to come and squeeze him. So I just wanted to sort of like get your thoughts. Like what happens exactly in those uh, situations? Is it just your reaction time, or is the car you know uh, not launching properly? He's just too generous. Uh, oh yeah, are you just? <laughs> are you just? He, he was literally like generosity. like the orange one. I only showed like maybe you let him <laughs> you let him start off just to see. Okay, let's see what mafia can do. But you know what what is it? What was it like for you as a driver in those? With the orange one, mm. uh, my launch control was failing on both. Ah okay. But uh, issues. Unlike last year, this time the car came back more powerful. I think I came back with about two hundred more horses. Ah, okay. So whether he goes, I was still able to pull him. <laughs> you were able to pick him up, yeah. <laughs> Who is ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it was, it, was, it, was, it was the launch, that would, uh, yeah, the, the launch was failing, yeah. Launch yeah. was failing. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. And then uh, I've seen that picture even this year with the ice cubes. What's, what what happens with the ice cubes? In the, the ice cubes <laughs> is um, a slash machine. To so I put them on top of the intake. Uh, to cool the uh, manhole. Uh, so the colder the air, the colder the air you pull in, mm -hmm. yeah. the more the boost. Ah, okay. The okay. So like, the, like we mentioned, it's temperatures it's play a lot of roles. It will work on any car, it's not only my car, it's work on any car. Ah, the okay. colder air you pull in, the more the, the boost. That's the better the correct. Boost, that it performs. Yeah. Um, okay. That's why Subaru is only boost in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, no, I'm thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk Let's talk a bit about uh, prizes. Because it's it's also been one of you know um, the things that a lot of people talk about when it comes to the drag races. What do you guys think about um, the prize giving awards? There's a lot of people that say it should come with with money. You know, um, why do the organizers just give um, you know products and stuff like that? How do you guys, as a racing team and drivers, feel about um, you know the prize giving? So you see, with the what people don't understand is the amount of effort that goes in organizing such an event. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, fortunately, this year I was uh, given a bit of a part uh, from the soccer bikers to assist with. Mm -hmm. And I realized the magnitude of this event and to make sure that when you are legal, you've got all your paperwork in order. You've got Zamsa on board. You've yeah. got the actual circuit to work on. You've got your sponsors that you're trying to rake in, which people still don't believe. The business community is still a little weak in mm -hmm. understanding and believing that this is an event that actually works to their benefit. Mm -hmm. So if we have a situation where we create a budget for the same event, and uh, most of the time, in fact, all the time, we're running short on the budget. As Lusaka bikers, they've always had to put their own monies in to try and make this work. Yeah. So over and above everything, when you come back and see that, okay, the, the actual uh, drag event, mm -hmm. people only see the 25th of May and say, okay, morning, evening, we're done, we're going home. Right. But there's so much input that happens. Uh, the organizers were actually working till 
past midnight trying yeah. to clean up the place because remember that road is an a public road, public road. Yeah. Yeah. so like we got to hand it over back and we have to give it back in a better shape compared to what it was so there's a lot that goes in and at the end of the day when it comes to the prizes as much as people may want to see the money being given to the to the winners mm -hmm. or a better pricing all right we had some nice uh, additions to the pricing this year we had a one night stay for the king of drag mm -hmm. at um, kango golf oh, and nice. over and above that it all comes down to sponsorship once the business committee understands that this is actually an advertising platform for them right. where they will also generate income at the same time support the sport yeah whatever monies will come through definitely it will all go in trying to improve the next track as well mm -hmm. as trying to make sure that you encourage the winners yeah. But remember, okay. as petrol heads and as, as a motorsport, so long as we've done our best day, yeah. yes, you take a trophy home. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the feeling you get in your heart, that money won't cover it. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 It doesn't matter. It's, it's true. It's true. So it's I, I more about the, the respect and the, the feeling of I am number one. For us, yeah. remember, for us in this community, it's still growing, right? It's, mm. This is only what we could say the official second year of this. Mm. And you've seen the progression that's happened. So as you mentioned, the business community will start to see the data now, start to see the analytics that will be provided on how the event is performing. Mm -hmm. And that will lead to all of this coming on board. We as a team, and I'm sure every racer that was there yeah. was not concerned about what they were receiving at the end of the day. They were there to prove a point, to drive their cars, and most importantly, have fun. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, definitely... People have mentioned about the the money issue, but like you're saying, I've, I've seen it more on the side of people who are actually not even participating, you know, but most of the drivers who, who are actually there uh, are actually okay with the way uh, things are. But there's another thing that Felix had mentioned, which uh, is drivers are actually supposed to be the ones going to look for sponsors. And I think that, that actually opened my eyes because in Zambia, we've got this culture, even when you talk about uh, spinning and whatnot, everybody's looking at the organizers, mm -hmm. putting money together to pay you guys to perform. Whereas not enough uh, drivers are looking at how can I build my brand image mm -hmm. to a point where, you know, a brand can come and say, oh, we would like to sponsor this this team to yeah. do this. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys have also looked into that sort of thing. Like, uh, are there any sponsors that you would like to, you know? So the, I think he'll add to this. But I, I, what I like to, there's a fine line between event organizing sponsors mm -hmm. and vehicle sponsors. You can add to that. So basically, Prish is actually correct. That's what mm -hmm. I was about to say that uh, you get sponsors uh, for example i'll give you zubair wants to enter the drags and he's told as a driver that mm -hmm. Zubair go and look for sponsors the first sponsor that will come on board is a bigger turbo for zubair <laughs> yeah. we need an ambulance there yes. we need fencing we yeah. need security we need registration you understand yeah so like you said that there's event sponsors and there's individual and team sponsors mm -hmm. so the moment this task is given to a driver it now moves away from the event mm -hmm. and very few drivers will actually push the sponsors to come and sponsor the event Correct. Mm -hmm. rather individually or as a team sponsoring. So we've got a plan. We actually have sponsors that have come on board that want to sponsor the racing team yeah. for the one fact that we are planning to go international. Yeah. So the exposure is given to them there. Mm -hmm. But we would like to encourage the sponsors to believe in Lusaka bikers. We've got audited accounts as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. They can go and have a look at what has been happening. And they can speak to previous sponsors as well to understand that what were your benefits out of this event. Mm -hmm. We received a call yesterday yeah. to say that, look, we sponsored, although it was a small amount, you know what, it put us out there. Right. So there is a benefit for the business community as well. Mm -hmm. But over and above that, individually, and I still feel that you can get yourself sponsored, but if the event does not take place, yeah. the sponsorship means nothing. Yeah. It's worthless. So somewhere down the line, we should all work hard together, try and get sponsors to sponsor the event. And then after that, on a second place, come and sponsor the drivers and the teams. Mm -hmm. Correct. As for Race Wolf, we've always uh, had from the onset, we had made a decision that our primary concern and our primary aim is to get an event happening. Mm -hmm. Thereafter, now we come down to our vehicles and the team itself. Mm, okay yeah we're on our on our individual capacities right now okay yeah. all right cool all right so i think just to start kind of wrapping things up what what are some of the you know things to, we can look forward to as uh, race wolf going into the next uh, session that we'll be having in september <laughs> no we there was a lot of fans. The merchandise merchandise mm. will be there okay, okay cool uh hopefully more exclusive cars on board mm. but also better performances from our end okay. i think 
uh, you're going to see a far more prepared team. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to have things dialed in a lot more. Yeah. Uh, as always, I don't know if you noticed there or not, we, we're friendly with everybody and we're welcome to help anybody that's there on that day, mm -hmm. even and before. Yeah. Well. And to accept the, the help, accept the help as well. Someone's we're open to everything. Mm -hmm. We're open to everything. But for now, till the next event, that's our goal to get ourselves registered, get everything sorted out, start giving the fans what they want to see or what mm -hmm. they want to wear, anything of that sort, get the cars prepared for the next race so we yeah. can perform. And as a team now, we have the criteria what to check off on how to do our safety better, how to have the track prepared better. So you'll see a, a much more professional environment coming forward. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, how, how are we going to balance um, the competition and teamwork at the same time? Because I see a lot of um, guys will be uh, part of the, the race wolf team. No, no, no. We've got Junior mm -hmm. already, we've got Mr. M, we've got you, and everyone in the car community is expecting you guys to be battling it out. So, how are you going to balance Level being up. able to, to compete with each other <laughs> <laughs> and when you're on the same team? We, we've, that's what we want to create healthy competition, mm. right? So, okay. when it's race day, there's nothing like, oh, Ibrahim is my brother, so I'm taking no, it. No, 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 no. You know, Gary <laughs> Heinsohn once yeah. said, mm. once the clock is switched on, we are not friends. Mm -hmm. Go meet after the finish line. Okay. <laughs> no, on the race team, we are. I disagree mm -hmm. with you on that one. On the race team, we are. Yeah. But whoever sets the fastest race, time, mm -hmm. reigns king. And that's okay. how it is. But 100%, we, we all 100%, happy for, we're all happy for that, for right? For everyone. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But we want, think, we want positive competition to come out. Yeah. I think, that's what, I think that's what, as fans, we, we expect. There should be sportsmanship, yes. Yes. But I think when the when we're on the drag strip, we okay. want to see Mafia put in the best. No, 100%. To see the R8 because if you look at it, the best, we, yeah. our perspective isn't local. Our perspective yeah. is international. So mm -hmm. when, when, when we're going to be competing, if he sets a nine second quarter, we know that we are ready for the international. Yeah. yeah. Whether it's me or him or him or him. But that number lets us know, no, now we're mm -hmm. ready. That means that gives me time or it gives us time to work on the cars to get to that level and he's ready for that competition out there so we have that mindset set ready that we can go out there yeah okay cool uh, you've touched about you've touched to, uh, on the timing mm -hmm. uh, i just wanted to hear your thoughts on the whole timing setup that we actually have for the drag races right now okay i was uh, discussing with fairway before we set up this podcast that there's time that was given when the show ended then another time sheet came out We've got like four time sheets that we are apparently official. So I don't know if you have any no, comments no, no. as drivers, no, as drivers on what was happening with the timing. What 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 are you? He's got the inside, the, the correct, the correct something. information. Yeah, yes. it's not a life and death situation. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. The organizers did their very best, mm. and ZMSA was there as well mm -hmm. to make sure that it's regulated. Okay? Yeah. Sometimes we do face technical difficulties. Sometimes there's miscommunication, correct. and we've got people who have actually jumped the fence and taking false information around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've got that side to handle with. At the same time, we should understand something that it was a fun day, it was a fun event. We were all there to have fun, to see what's the best we can do. Yeah. No one's neck was being squeezed there, that you lost one second, you're not coming home. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So regardless mm -hmm. of that, we are all progressing. As much as we as Race Wolf are going up, climbing up the ladder, mm -hmm. Osaka bikers, event organizers, ZMSA also, we all learn, we step it up forward. Mm -hmm. So we do have a proposal that will come through later on. We will want to get the new equipment, yeah. slightly latest, and see how that will help. At least that will uh, put a lid on everyone else's mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because at the end of the day, like um, all the event organizers, all the effort they did, even the equipment they got, mm -hmm. we had to use what was official, Available, right? Yeah. And in all fairness, that's what official dictates and exactly official and cal calibrated, correct? Mm -hmm. So. Regardless of what happened, that's the time that's set, right? We all being tested on one medium. That's the most important thing. Oh right? yes. Right now, in the future, if we get newer technology, which we're hoping things will fall through as the sport grows, then that will add to the entertainment factor of it and the data analytics, mm -hmm. right? But for now, we were happy. We're all happy. There's no issues. There were procedures and protocols set into place for anybody that had a dispute. Mm -hmm. They were more than willing to. So. This all added in there. There's a lot of things that happen in the background. As a race wolf, we did utilize them and they are effective. The <laughs> booklet that was given to the Correct. competitors, there is a point where you need to fill in your complaints, your protests. Correct. They and that very was effective. filled. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that's one thing we should give thanks to the, to the organizers absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. They had their ducks in a row. Uh -huh. right? And uh, bottom line is as race wolf, we have absolutely no complaint. We're very happy with the event. We're very absolutely. happy with the outcome as well. Uh -huh. And we encourage the organizers to meet them somewhere in September. Mm -hmm. and see where we can assist and we do tell everyone as well mm -hmm. that come through come and help yes any help is is accepted we, yeah. we, we need people to come through so we can also be more prepared 
Yeah, cool. No, thank you for letting us know that the like you've explained, I mean the timing was done on the same devices for everyone. Exactly. So as far as the times uh, they were correct and obviously like you're saying there's room for improvement and when we get to that point yeah. uh, I would definitely be, you know, in a better place to do exactly. the timings uh, much better. So I think we just like to get some last thoughts, maybe just from Priyash as the the R8 owner. Um, I'm just trying to think from the perspective of you know a young driver out there who's thinking I would like to be like this guy. What are some of your last words that you would you know say to inspire the younger guys coming up in in drag racing? Look, I can say this: when I started, actually, uh, Ibrahim was one of the first people I ever raced mm. in my career <laughs> all right and that happened almost nine to ten years ago yeah all right mm. so <laughs> so that lets you know I'm, I'm 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 getting old i'm getting very old okay yeah. but what it is is it, it's the passion keep the passion keep the passion alive you never know where you're going to end up because at that point in time i'm not where i am now yeah, i'm not yeah. with the things i had but i had this vision i had this goal of what i wanted to achieve how i was going to achieve it and i followed the plan through uh, and I, I strongly say respect everybody coming through it. Everybody teaches you a lesson, whether they're good or bad, they come into your life, but build upon what's come through and it'll yeah. get you to your vision. And so anybody that wants to get into this sport, you're more than welcome to contact us. We will help you. We will guide you. Don't do things yourself, right? Take interest for people who have some experience and get yeah. are gaining more expense because we'll share this information and help us improve everybody to get mm. on a similar platform. Yeah. Take advantage of our mistakes. Yeah, take it yeah. 110% take mistakes, advantage yeah. of our mistakes. Mm. All right. All right, cool. I think everything has been said and done. Uh, let's let's give a round of applause to Ibrahim oh, for actually standing up and speaking. Yeah. <laughs> the man he said you would say nothing, yeah, but at least yeah. he got us. No, yeah, no, he, he got his words out. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think <laughs> I just want to say uh, thank you so much Even to the Royal School team. Ibrahim. This yeah. head can fit on your car. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much to the Race Wolf team for being with us on uh, the Z Gear podcast. I hope that everybody has, you know, learned something about the R8, the team, and you know, just their vision for the drag races. I hope you guys have enjoyed this podcast. Uh, looking forward to seeing you guys, um, you know, in the next podcast. We're going to have our magazine out uh, coming, uh, you know, this this coming week. You're going to see more content from the drag races. Also, the vehicle maintenance series that uh, we put out. And uh, yeah, we've restocked on stickers. Uh, T-shirts are coming out as well. And uh, I just want to thank everybody for always being a part of us. This is our eighth episode. We're really pushing, trying to make sure that, you know, we have a platform like this where yeah. we can talk as car guys about what we love. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this has been fantastic. It. So we thank yeah. you as well for having us on board. Yeah, no, and thanks. on behalf of everybody from Race Wolf, even the uh, other board members that couldn't be on this yeah. podcast, we thank you very much for giving us this opportunity. Awesome, awesome. Great to have you guys. So we'll see you guys on the next podcast. Drive safe and have fun.